Okay, welcome on coach. Our next lecture is on Alzheimer's disease. Uh, we said Alzheimer's disease is a devastating illness that presents with progressive memory loss, impaired thinking, hallucinations, and delusions, uh, inability to perform daily tasks, which affects about 0.5 million uh, older Canadians. This was these this are data. Uh, uh, from Canada and causes about 10,000 deaths per year. This was, it is the top leading cause of adult deaths in that particular country. Uh, it's estimated an annual cost of about 8 billion US dollars, which is next to heart disease and cancer spending in the same context. So, uh, what do we know about Alzheimer's disease? That is a, it's a, it's a, it's a progressive disease of the CNS. Okay, these people present with loss of memory. They cannot think well, their thinking is impaired. Hallucination, they, 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 they talk things that we, we don't see, you know, and even they see things that we cannot see, that's called the hallucination. And this one is just the person with beliefs, things that are not real, but they believe it is real because already their mind is affected. Uh, we said it causes an irreversible brain damage and there is no cure. Uh, the current drugs offer little relief for symptoms or to prevent a continued loss of the neurons. Because what happens here is that there is degeneration of the neurons, but the treatment is intended to at least minimize the continued degeneration so that at least uh, the symptoms don't deteriorate. Uh, the cause remains unknown and diagnosis requires ruling out alternative causes like systemic illnesses, stroke, and neurologic conditions, or other cognitive impairing drugs. Cognitive impairing drugs can be the commonly abused drugs, like those people who are drug abusers who might also present with similar hallucinations. So it's just like trying to rule out other different cells. A part of physiology of Alzheimer's disease, the disease results because of a degeneration in the, in the neurons of the brain, they degenerate. Uh, it begins in the part of the brain called the hippocampus, okay, and then this one leads to short term memory failure because the hippocampus is responsible uh, for this function, okay. So once it's affected, the, when the, once the neurons in the hippocampus start to degenerate, uh, these people start to develop a short term memory problems. And then from there, it spreads to the cerebral cortex, and there start to affect language and higher functioning. So the cerebral cortex, as you know, has the centers for language, and also uh, most of the higher functions uh, are performed in the cerebral cortex, higher brain functions, okay, like speech, and then reasoning, and all those kind of things, uh, it becomes affected. And then there will be complete loss of speech and also self-care, which often leads, leads to death. Of course, these people will never be able to take care of themselves, and uh, it can be very fatal. A potential causes of Alzheimer's disease. So we said reduced colonizing transmission in advanced stages. Accumulation of what is called beta amyloid protein outside neuron. This is another protein that is found once found to accumulate. In large number of the neurons uh, is found to be associated with this particular disease in this patient. Uh, there is neurofibrillary tangles and tear of normality inside the neuron. This also uh, formation of the fibers within the neurons. So they said sometimes there is a tangling of some fibers. Okay, they are like uh, interchange, not in the normal pattern, and then uh, it becomes a risk factor that is found in. People presenting with Alzheimer's disease. There's something called the IFO lipoprotein IFO gene variation increased risk, but not the sole determinant. So, people who are found to be having increase in this particular gene, this is another gene, are uh, susceptible to this particular disease, but they say it's not a sole determinant, but it has a risk. We have the endoplasmic reticulum associated binding protein, it's also linked to neurotoxicity that might lead to Alzheimer's disease. We have uh, 
elevated hemocysteine levels also increase uh, uh, the risk of Alzheimer's disease. So hemocysteine, these are part of the normal amino acids that uh, uh, are found in our brain. Uh, and it's trying to say here that when the, the amount becomes elevated, not within the normal, it also brings us to a high risk of uh, getting Alzheimer's disease. Okay, risk factors and symptoms still said is it's almost a disease of the elder. Okay, 90% occurs in those who are 65 years old. But also, mostly family history, people with family history of Alzheimer's disease also have the, risk, uh, the highest risk compared to those with the family history. And the risk doubles every 10 years after the person has reached 65 years of age. Uh, it progresses from mild, moderate, and severe. Onset to death normally occurs between four to eight years, but it can be longer. Some people can stay with the disease up to 10 years. Uh, there's what we call sundowning. Uh, this is just sundowning. This is so because uh, in many patients, the symptoms intensify in the evening. So wait till the evening and then they start getting worse symptoms uh, during the sun, when the sun is going down. We call it sundowning symptom. Uh, we look at the disease biomarkers in Alzheimer's disease. We, we, we have biochemical, and, and anatomic, and physiologic parameters that reflect the pathophysiologic process of this particular disease. Uh, two major groups are realized. We have the beta amyloid accumulation and also the degeneration of the, of the neuron that we already mentioned. Uh, this one detects possible disease onset years before symptoms. So when we see uh, people, uh, I mean, having uh, accumulated beta amyloid protein and also starting to uh, degenerate in the neurons. So they're telling us there is a risk for this particular disease. These things first happen before uh, the onset of, of symptoms in this particular patient. Biomarkers of limited clinical utility due to ambiguous results and lack of universal standards. Essential, they are this, this, this two are essential for the developing new drug treatments like the monoclonal antibodies against the beta amyloid protein. So, we said continuing with drugs for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, we said cognitive loss or dementia management. We use cholinesterase inhibitors such as galantamine, ribastigmine, and ronephazine. Also, we can use what we call N metal M D aspartate, metal D aspartate, MDMA receptor blockers, a, a drug with the name such, such as memantine. Okay, this is an example of the MDMA drug, memantine. Statistically significant, but clinically marginal effects. So, what this point trying to say is that this drug uh, has, it gives us some improvement uh, with some statistical. Uh, it's a significant where at least a number of patients saw improvement, but clinically the, the, the benefits are not much, they're just marginal. Uh, future possibilities, we might consider what we call stem cell implants for patients with Alzheimer's disease or even Parkinson's disease. These are things under consideration. Uh, Neuropsychiatric symptoms, these patients might present with agitation, aggression, just like any neuropsychiatric patient. Uh, the new zones, we already mentioned, hallucinations, of course, they are mixers, they are depressed and they have anxiety. And sometimes also we have limited benefits from multiple drug classes. Many a times we use combined drugs, medication. Sometimes they say the benefit might be limited. Preventing or delaying the cognitive decline. Uh, some expert panel in 2010 found no good evidence supporting the association of any modifiable risk factor to reduce the uh, risk of the disease. Factors considered include diet, exercise, cognitive training, social interaction, economic status, medical supplement, medication, psychological. So, what they are trying to say is that these are like some lifestyle or other factors that will at least help uh, or prevent or delay the, the, the continued. Decline in cognitive function. 
Okay, we have come to the end. Thank you so much. And see you in the next lecture.